Hi everyone, welcome to the Movie Reception Show. I am Fariba and we're just about to watch the sixth episode of House of the Dragon, which means we're now just about halfway through. And that means we're just about getting to the beginning of the end of the season. Um, we know we will have a second season, so at least that's something that we can look forward to. I don't know exactly what that would entail about the whole arc that they plan to do or what their plans are in general in terms of how they're going to narrate just basically the Targaryen story but now we're in the time jump which is basically you know we're getting to we're just gonna see the older Rhaenyra or older Alicent we're gonna see even older uh Lenore and Lena um there's gonna be a lot more drama going on and as we saw in some of the uh, clips and trailers and promos for this episode so things are really going to get down in this episode um the tensions are going to rise for sure i mean this is going to be very very interesting again we're going to have a we're going to have a couple new cast people taking over um but yeah this is going to be a very interesting episode moving forward just kind of seeing what's going to happen especially that dynamic between allison and Rhaenyra, and kind of see how it goes from here and how that will lead up to the, basically the event for uh, Dance of the Dragon. So without further ado, let's get started with episode 6 of House of the Dragon. Okay, Allison. What? She wants to see you. Now. I'm with you. I should hope so. Let me take it. And I love, love Rhaenyra and Lenore's relationship. Man, Olivia Cook's gonna kill this role, I swear. She's such an amazing actress. Man, she's gonna kill it. She resting after your legs. Yeah, sure. I have no doubt we would prefer that, Your Grace. Well, happy news this morning. Indeed, Your Grace. Where is he? Where is my grandson? Oh my god, he's without that much hair. He's going that bad. Oh. A fine prince. Bit of a name yet? We haven't seen Joffrey. Can we call Joffrey? Oh. He's an Edward Joffrey. I do believe he has his father's name. Oh my god. That's not good. Owen wishes to be introduced. I think he knows too, huh? Yeah, those are all his kids, so. <laughs> Father, please may I play Joffrey? No, but I also no, like no. how Lenora is Back just being very, very respectful oh. about all this. I mean, they, they made this deal, so. <laughs> That's a dragon pit, I see. See, George Miles is good. Can I say it? 
Chacares. Come on, say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. Your daughter doesn't like you. David. Chris Pig. You will have a dragon one day. He'll have to close an eye. I know it. He won't laugh. Children and heathens. They're savages. They're yeah. surprising. <laughs> you sure it was not a record with my tweet? Did you witness the act itself? She's like, I want Conflict evidence of everything. <laughs> of an allegation like the one you two had would be dire. The princess Rhaenyra is brazen and relentless. A spider who stings and sucks her prey dry. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh he is. Yes. That was beneath me, Your Grace, and I apologize. What in the world? That better not be. Oh. Oh my lord. Whose idea is it? Send the throne into Cyrus Targaryen would be her heir. So <sighs> you are nearly a man grown. How is it that you can be so short sighted? If Rhaenyra comes into power, your very life could be forfeit. Ends as well. She can move to cut off any challenge to her succession. You are the challenge! You are the challenge, Egon! Simply by uh... living and breathing! Ha <laughs> ha. Ah, uh, there we go. You are the king's firstborn son. And what they know, what everyone in the realm knows, in their blood and in their bones, is that one day you will be our king. Oh my god, Damon. <laughs> Is that Lena or is that one of this? That's Lena. Okay. Wow, she has a huge ass dragon! Fun time? They have a much better life than anyone else. <laughs> Lamb hearts are to their new Targaryen lord. You would have your freedom of the city and the harbor, as befits your royal station. Continue. Lise and its ally will certainly entertain. God, Damon is a father. Who would have thought of that, right? I mean, that's in the books, but. He's like, 
I'm gonna give all the wisdom to all my kids. We don't belong here. Valeria is gone. We don't belong anywhere. for mercy. Uh, you'll have a new opponent then, my lord of the straw. Let's see if you can touch me. You and your brother. Okay. Ah! I have to do better than that. Ah! 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 Weapons up, boy. Give your enemies no contact. Mm -hmm. Seems the younger boys could do better with a bit of your engage. Does Lionel know? I I think he knows. I think Lionel knows. Yeah. Most men would only have that kind of devotion to a cousin, or a brother, or a son. <laughs> this is how we feel about this. Someone didn't get half their guard up. You have laid us open to accusations of an uglier treachery. And what's treachery, is that? Don't play the fool with me, boy. Your intimacy with the Princess Rhaenyra is an offense that would mean exile and death for you, for her, for the children. Only for which my father affected a similar blindness. Have I not these many years? And yet today, you publicly assaulted a knight of the king's heart in the, in the defense of your. Oh. I fell down. <laughs> Where have you been? Oh, we can't. Did I miss? About our son's parentage. Vile, disgusting insinuations. Insinuations, are they? They are our sons, yours and mine. And their true father will not abandon them now to go carousing through the narrow sea, waggling his sword and winking at his sailors. I am a knight. As your princess and the heir to the throne, you are commanded to remain in King's Landing and at my side. Mm -mm. There is more than one way to bind yourself to a dragon. I was without one until I was 15 years old. And now I ride a big hawk. The oh. largest in the world. He's huge. The hard road. Baylor's dragon was born to have. Father ignores me. He's doing his best. Present resemblance to the command of the city watch. <laughs> he seems to have left that detail out. So they know too. Oh. I miss my brother, David. I married. It's more than this. Remains a tally problem. Tallies. <laughs> there will be country folk who know the lines have been drawn for generations. That is easy enough. So, Tyler, <clears throat> uh, we should address the latest developments in the Stepstones, my lords. Yeah. 
shut up that blasted place. <laughs> Seriously. The backwoods have the upper hand. <sighs> Leave them to see reason. Because <laughs> I don't Just think the Dorne is part of West Where are Seven Kingdoms, right? Dorn. I suppose I should call him king as point. he styles himself when he won a battle there once. Watchtowers and fleet of ships, a garrison of soldiers sent to hold our ground. We cannot afford it. Our coffers are great, but not infinite. We must consider the cost to our subjects. I must the cost it. of war is greater. But we have been lax, and the old monster now lifts its head. She is right. War is more expensive. Fine line, I apologize. But we are one house. And long before that, we were friends. <laughs> this could have this could have been My son, friend, Deceris, but... will inherit the Iron Throne after me. I propose we betroth him to your daughter, Helena. Ally ourselves. Once and for all. Let them rule together. Our most judicious proposition. Oh man, Elizabeth's killing it. She's doing amazing. I'm being endlessly fussed over Lionel. I've resigned my position as Hand of the King. The episode in the yard this morning, my son Howling has disgraced himself. And every fishwife in King's Landing will soon be telling the tale. Young Howling's outburst was unfortunate, it's true. But he's been expelled from the city. Watch, that seems punishment enough. For friends in contrast to all others. You speak kind words, but there is a shadow over my house, and it grows ever darker. I can no longer serve you with integrity. Wow, what this, is this man shadow? is honorable. <laughs> Name it that cast such a gloom. Yes, you must have your reasoning in plain language. Go away, Alison. <laughs> my father. I cannot give unbiased counsel to the king. It is now that I must rue the absence of my own father. He wouldn't hesitate to speak the truth to the king if Otto Hightower was still at hand. You cannot say, my queen, that your father would be impartial in this matter. No, but he would be partial to me. What? You just contradicted everything. In all of King's Landing, is it known to take my son? Still do have Valerian blood, so to your position. You always said if you were absent from court, she would pour her honey in your father's ear. The wise sailor flees the storms it gathers. Blame me. Bring him. We need every sword we can muster.
set his ring with Ama? Oh, she plotting. Oh, my God. Building hubris by hand, the black. You pass judgment. The queen makes a wish. Not the servant of the realm would not strive to fulfill it. I assume you will write to your father now. Paris. I did not. Wish for this. I feel certain you will reward me. When the time is right. Storm keeps on brewing and brewing until it becomes a hurricane. That's all it's becoming down to. But yeah, no. Um let's just first talk about just the whole new casting that we have now that we have emma darcy uh taking over from millie alcock and olivia cook taking over from uh i can't remember the actors actress name right there but but let's just talk about that for one bit right i mean uh, let me just say that olivia cook is really killing it as um as allison which i i have I really anticipated from because she is a, a really incredible actress. I've seen her work before in movies like Sound of Metal, but I would say I would recommend watching Me, Earl, and Dying Girl because she was really phenomenal in that film. I think that was actually one of her first films that she had featured in. Um, but yeah, no, she is really killing it as Allison. Like, I mean, I know I've been <laughs> quite cynical about her, but but I mean, of course, I think just watching just this Allison, right? Like, she she has transformed into this Allison where it's essentially just somebody who really wants to you know what she believes is to be a whole entity where they're abusing their power right that's what she is thinking from her side of point of view right I understand all that and um and especially because like she got married very young as a you know 15 year old girl who didn't really kind of get to choose what she wants to do and then sees like when you're able to do anything that she wants like again i get all of that and now here we're kind of seeing her just saying that well if she's just like given the fact that she had to give up all that life that you know passion that she had and everything like that now she wants to see it be rewarded in some way in a sense where it's basically you know uh putting her eldest son into the iron throne and challenging rhaenyra um and we're seeing how I wouldn't say plotting because we saw in the very end that she didn't want any of this, but uh, but we're seeing how things are slowly starting to be, you know, a conspiracy. Things are being a plot. Uh, we just saw how Harwin Strong basically got killed. Uh, we don't know what happened to Lionel. I'm going to assume that he is still alive from the looks of it. We don't know yet. We'll probably know in the next episode, but Harwin's definitely dead. That's for sure. Um, uh, and yeah, like there's a lot. The, the teams are being formed right we're seeing who sides with who we already know that Kristen is probably going to be with allison uh we know that the younger strong kid i can't remember his name straight out of my head but he's going to be also be um siding with allison but then it's going to be very in interesting to see what's going to happen later on when we do get to kind of that war between allison hightower and rainier which we kind of saw pre a preview to but but yeah, things are really starting to um, build up. Um, so yeah, I mean, as I mentioned before, Al Olivia Cook is phenomenal. Emma Darcy, I mean, I gotta also give, I have to also give their props too, in terms of the way that they are performing in this series. They've managed to so kind of a different set of Rhaenyra, where uh, the Rhaenyra that we're seeing here is a bit more. You know, like she's starting to really understand the issues that are at hand. She knows what's going to be, uh, what's at stake, basically, and she's understanding that, right? And I think Emma has done a phenomenal job just taking, just carrying over uh, all that uh, Millie Alcott had had pulled off for this character and managed to 
really show like a very very you know desperate I mean re yeah desperate Rhaenyra who knows that well she needs to start like you know playing the game at this point or otherwise her claim is going to be challenged as well as her sons as well right so I, again I'm and then just seeing just the tension between the two friends again Emma and Olivia are just doing such a phenomenal job. Like, they're really, really doing amazing. Where it's just like, we're literally, like, we haven't even gone to the worst of it yet. We're already seeing all this tension, this awkwardness of between the two of them. Even, like, Rhaenyra's trying to be like, oh, I want to try and make up for what's going on between us. Although, again, that's probably just her way of just, you know, getting really desperate, knowing that, like, anything can happen to the point where she might be removed from the throne, right? So there's a lot of things going on in terms of that. Um, now let's move forward to some of the other stuff, right? So we are we saw Damon again. He's back. Um, but we definitely see a much different Damon, right? He isn't that cocky, attention-seeking Damon that we saw from the first five episodes. He's just somebody who's like, well, I kind of just want to settle, but nah, I don't really care about things and all that sort of stuff, right? And that's like, you know, of course, he has two daughters now, and now he's a widow, what we just saw in this episode. Um, it's going to be very interesting to see kind of where his story goes from here, because it just seems like he kind of, I want to say give up, but he just, you know, he's just accepted his faith in a way. Um, and just to see him, like, this is kind of like the first time we actually seen him actually care, in a sense, for someone like Lena. Because um, he, he, we see like that one bit where he's emotional. He can't believe like what's just happened. Yada yada yada. And that's probably one of the rare cases that we've actually seen Damon just show this sort of side of him. Um, and then there's even that one part where like it seemed like oh the blade situation. Because remember <laughs> in the first first episode we saw you know. Viserys basically commanded, gave the decision that, well, you know what, we're going to save the child first and not the mother. And here we are kind of seeing a daemon where it's like, he doesn't really want to do that. And that's just, I, not it's not really ironic or anything, but it kind of shows like a different situation in terms of daemon and seeing how, and again, it just kind of shows kind of his growth in a sense where, you know, he is really, really starting to become this really complex character and i think that's why so many people love him because yes he is attention seeker yes he wants the power he wants the throne but now it's like okay well here's the point of him 10 years later where it's like well it doesn't look like it's gonna work out for him therefore he's just accepting his faith right um but yeah no this is a great episode where we just again we're seeing so much tension brewing we're seeing even the fact that Kristen, oh man that man is really, really has a grudge towards Rhaenyra. I mean, I, I get it. He basically was dumped. Um, but man, that's going to be interesting just to see how all of that unfolds, especially now that we're kind of getting closer and closer to Viserys' death and therefore basically dragon, uh, the Dances of Dragon event. Um, let's quickly talk about the kids. The kids are, so I would say uh, I, Allison's kids aren't as bad as I thought <laughs> they were going to be. I was kind of quite surprised uh, I, I was expect, I was like expecting like a Joffrey type of character who knows maybe he still might but but that's kind of my expectations but um, so far they're not that bad uh, Helena as we can tell she definitely doesn't like her mother um, and then we have the two sons uh, it's gonna be very interesting because he's going to end up become I guess he, I think he's gonna be the one who's gonna be pitting up against Rhaenyra later on that's what's being implied here um but it's gonna be very uh, again it's really too soon to really know who these characters are because they're so new but hopefully we start to get a little bit of an idea of who they are and how they're going to you know play a part into this event that we're hopefully going to see maybe not this season from the looks of it maybe in the next but who knows we'll see how everything unfolds but yeah no this is again like now that we're finally getting to we finally reached that time jump we're finally seeing where the stakes are really really high characters are plotting political minds are all over the roof people are desperate people really want you know the crown we're really getting to that point we're seeing it it's happening um it's basically base best things that make game of thrones game of thrones right the politics the ambitions the betrayals the plotting the conspiracy everything right and we're we saw basically it bits and pieces of every part of those in this episode and Again, it's really just setting up for just like 
the turning point, right? And that is going to be Viserys' death. So it's going to be interesting how that's going to happen. Again, like, again, every time we're always seeing each episode just doing even better than the last. And this one, again, just top notch. So, yeah, that's all I really have to say. I mean, again, the performances have been great. It's really amazing just seeing how they've been they've managed to you know transition from the time from you know a young Rhaenyra and Alicent back when they were like 19 to now a much older mo- almost near their 30s characters and seeing how they still managed to embody kind of the essence of the characters that we saw in the beginning but also like seeing their growth and evolution how they're really really learning right so yeah again phenomenal episode but yeah let me know what you think did you enjoy this episode? What are things that you that you like? What are things that you don't like? Um, who are the characters that you're starting to you know root for? Who do you not want to root for? What are your thoughts about the change in casting now that Emma Darcy and Olivia Cook have now taken over? Uh, what do you think is gonna happen moving forward now that we all we're now down to the four the last four episodes really? And how do you think everything's gonna start really kind of getting together in terms of the story and the whole situation, the plotting, everything like that? Let me know in the comments down below and make sure to like and subscribe.